Emmanuel, meaning God with us, was a promise kept. More than 2,000 years ago, a child was born in a manger in the town of Bethlehem. This child was unique. He had created the world and had existed before anything or anyone. This child was God. God stepped into this world not as a twist of fate or a punishment from a higher being. It was a choice. God stepped into what he had created to seek and save the lost and to provide a way for people to be saved. This child was a king and a king with a plan. This child would bring hope, the confidence that God would defeat sin, that God would win over evil. This child would bring peace, even in the midst of a great suffering and trials, a peace that assures his followers that he is in control even when it feels like nobody is. And this child would bring joy, for he would deliver us. This child would bring love, a love that would never be taken away, a love that is beyond our understanding. Today, as we light the center candle remembering Jesus, he is the center of our lives and the center of our worship. Would you stand with us and we're going to sing some carols together.
uh, greet someone beside you. All right, so you guys can have a seat for a few minutes. Welcome to uh, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church. My name is David. Um, if you're new or visiting, we'd love for you to sign the guest book at the back. Um, you guys braved the cold and the snow, uh, so well done. Um, we're glad to have you here with us. Um, we're going to continue to sing some more carols in a moment, but I just want to give you a few instructions with the candles. Um, we're going to have a candlelight at the very last song. Um, we'll have a few people light the candles, and then you'll kind of just pass it along in the row. And so um, once you're done, once that song is done, we're going to have a bin at the back that you can just throw that candle in at the end. And if you could uh, blow it out right at the end of that song, <laughs> that would be great first. <laughs> um, the other thing, too, is we don't have services tomorrow morning. Um, we'll resume back on January 1st. We have uh, Bill Evans is going to be preaching uh, that service. So uh, that'll be January 1st. That will be New Year's Day. Um, and there'll be no potluck that day either. Um, I forgot to mention that on Sunday, but there is no potluck that Sunday. Um, I think there'll be a few people away. So um, the offices are also closed um, this week. Um, uh, I'll be away, and Josh is away as well. And so I think Josh will be back next week, so it'll be uh, opened up then. But let me pray for us, and then we'll continue to sing a few more songs. Uh, Father, thank you that we can come here and uh, we can sing songs that, that glorify you. Uh, Lord, I pray that um, you would be the anthem of our hearts, Lord, that uh, you would receive our praise, and, and Lord, that this night would be uh, glorifying to you, Lord, in, in everything we do from um, singing to, um, Lord, when we go home and we celebrate all our Christmas um, things um, as our families, Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified in that. Uh, Lord, I pray that you continue to receive our praise now in your uh, precious name, amen. Would you stand with us, and we're going to continue to sing a few more songs.
All right. Well, welcome to uh, Chetwin Baptist Church, and uh, Merry Christmas to all of you, and a Happy New Year uh, coming soon. Um, I don't think I'll see you any of you before the New Year, so Happy New Year as well. Um, if you're joining us online uh, or on the radio, a uh, special and warm welcome to you as well. We, uh, we're glad that you've chosen to uh, spend your evening with us. Um, here's my gift to you. I'm going to preach really short. Um, I know that those, those chairs are uncomfortable, and, uh, and we don't want you to be sitting in them too long. So uh, we'll get back to singing in a little bit here. Uh, but Christmas is such a, a great time of year. The streets are, are bright with Christmas lights and Christmas trees. Most of them usually have lots of presents by this time. Uh, many of you will have the smell of Christmas dinner, probably cooking either today or tomorrow, um, being prepared, and, and also possibly the smell of a freshly cut Christmas tree in your home. Soon, uh, wrapping paper will be flying everywhere and presents will be just waiting to be enjoyed. It's a, it's a great time of year, and it's the one time of year where it's acceptable and possibly even tolerable that there's snow on the ground uh, because you have to have snow with Christmas. And so there's a lot of really good things about this season, lots of really good memories and traditions that almost all of us have associated with this time of year. But what is Christmas really all about? Um, I had a friend of mine who, um, he's got a few kids, and, and last year his, his kid invited over the neighbor kid just to come hang out and play right around this time of year. And so he was playing around, and he came and he saw this manger scene set up, and he asked, what, what is that? This, this boy had, um, he was about 10 or 12 years old, had never seen a manger scene before, and uh, he'd never stepped in a church and had no idea what this whole Christmas thing was, was all about. This past week, I was watching an interview done by another church down in the Lower Mainland, and, and they interviewed all these kids on what is Christmas all about. And it was, it was all church kids. And, and what was interesting is the kids really had no idea what Christmas was all about. And so I began to ask the question, do we really understand what Christmas is all about? I don't want to assume that, that everyone knows, um, churched or unchurched. Why do we give gifts this time of year? Why do we celebrate this time of year? What is Christmas all about? In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, we find probably the most famous Christmas story that you can read in Scripture that talks about what this is all about. It's here that we would see the angels and the shepherds, we would see wise men, we'd see Mary and Joseph, all centered around one thing. This thing was Jesus being born. Jesus, he was born um, into this world from a woman like all of us would have been. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes like most of us would have been. He was lying in a manger. That one is a bit unique unless, of course, you were born in a barn. So what, what is so significant about the birth of Christ? Why do we celebrate it each year? Why is there a manger scene? What relevance does this baby born in a manger have for us today? Well, I want to give you two reasons. First is that Jesus brought light into darkness. Isaiah 9-2 says this. Um, it's a passage often quoted this time of year. It says, The people in darkness have seen a great light. And on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And what this verse acknowledges is the fact that there is darkness in our world. And, and darkness is both, e uh, is both uh, evil and ignorance. Evil meaning that there is, there's evil and suffering all around us. You think about all the, the violence and the injustice, the, um, the abuse of power, um, homelessness, oppression, and grief. It's, it's all as a result of the darkness, or it is the darkness itself. Ignorance meaning by no human effort can we solve the problem of evil and suffering. What history has shown us and what human patterns have shown us is that um, our own intellect and innovation always falls short of solving this, this problem of darkness. And it's true that we, we can bring and offer some good things to our world, but it doesn't ever solve the root of the problem of evil. There's no government, no leader, no nonprofit organization, no charity that has been able to solve the problem of darkness in our world. And it is impossible by our own effort to fix the problem. And what's interesting is the Bible acknowledges that. Nowhere does it say that you and I can solve the problem of evil and darkness. And it actually says darkness is by your own doing as humans. 
Darkness entered the, the world as a result of, of rejecting God, and, and that began in, with Adam and Eve in the garden. They disobeyed God and therefore brought all of humanity into the darkness, and it separated us from God. But before we go too far, it's, it's easy to look at the world and say, yeah, they are, there's bad people out there, and there is darkness out there. But the Bible teaches us that actually there's darkness in you. There's evil and sin in you, and as a result, it has separated you from God, which means we've all been walking in darkness, that verse says. And the problem is we cannot bring ourselves out of the darkness. There's not enough good deeds or, or volunteering or helping or um, atoning or financially giving that will bring the opposite of darkness, which is light. You need something external to bring into us into the light. You need someone that has never sinned, who has never engaged in the darkness, who is perfect and righteous, and that is only God himself. And that's what Christmas is all about. Jesus, who is perfect, who is sinless, who is God himself, stepped into our world and became the light of the world to rescue us from the darkness and bring us into the light. And so the solution is Jesus. The message of Christianity is things are this bad, but he, there is some hope. The verse in Isaiah says, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Jesus, this little baby lying in a manger some 2,000 years ago, came to bring light and hope and joy and peace and love and salvation to those who are in this dark world. And he did it by defeating the darkness on the cross. Jesus says in John 8, 12, he says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that is great news. If you follow Jesus, you have the light of life. And the candles that we're going to be lighting in a few moments that are on your seats represents Jesus being light in the darkness. That's why we light those candles. And so it's a beautiful representation of that reality. So then how do we receive the light? This is the second point, is that Jesus became the, the greatest gift that we could ever receive by entering into this world 2,000 years ago. How do we get the light? We receive it as a free gift of grace. The greatest gift that we can receive this Christmas is salvation through Jesus. And that happens when we surrender our lives to him as Lord and as a Savior and when we, does, does, when we do that, he gives us a new heart, a new life, one that's not defined by your past or the, the darkness that you once walked in. Rather, it's, it's defined by a new identity, a, a child of God, of the living God. You're saved and redeemed, forgiven and freed. That gift of grace can be yours if you're willing to receive it. This is the time of year when we tend to receive lots of gifts. And gifts are really good things. But the gifts that we receive under the tree and from loved ones this time of year are only temporary at best. A couple of years ago, at the, uh, the end of 2020, if you haven't already blocked out that year, it was, it was the first year where it was just me and my wife and um, we were having Christmas together because we couldn't go home uh, for Christmas. And so we were living in a, a little basement suite in Kelowna, and we spent uh, most of our time there in the midst of lockdowns and, and isolation, and that time we were uh, locked down. And it was Christmas, and we couldn't see our family, so we just celebrated just the two of us, and, and there was a gift that I really, really wanted. I've been wanting this, um, it was like a boutique handmade uh, guitar pedal. I, I play the, the guitar, and, and so this thing just kind of complements the guitar, and I've been looking at this thing for years, wanting it. And so on Christmas morning, we started to open our gifts, and, and I, I opened it, and I got this gift, and I was so excited about it. So I was like, okay, I got to try this thing out. And so I, uh, I, uh, I plugged my guitar into it, and then I, I plugged it in, and I, I went to start it, and it lit on fire and burned up in front of my eyes. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember thinking, I, I don't think you could have asked for a more appropriate ending to the year of 2020. But point being is that gifts on earth don't last. They are temporary at best. They won't actually satisfy the deepest longing that our hearts need. We can enjoy them and, and we can show love towards other people through them. 
but there is a greater, eternal, perfect, and satisfying gift that our souls need. This gift will not light on fire. It will not break down. It will not perish. It will not be lost. It cannot be taken away from you. It is the free gift of salvation. And it's been given to you if you're willing to receive it. Luke 2.11 says this, and this is the, the Christmas passage, and this is just a verse from it. It says, Today in, in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. I love that. It's Jesus was born for you, to save you, to give himself for you. He pursued you. To quote the uh, uh, modern worship song out there, there is no mountain he won't climb up or wall he won't kick down coming after you. I love that picture. Jesus, God himself, stepped down from heaven, from glory. He risked everything. He counted the cost and said, you're worth it. He entered into the darkness to be light and to bring you into the light through the free gift of salvation. It's a gift. You don't need to earn it because you can't. You don't need to work for it because it's a free gift. You don't need to pay for it because it's been paid for by Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection to life where he defeated darkness. It's a free gift of grace. Jesus being born into this world was, was him proving his great love towards you by purchasing the greatest gift that you could ever receive at the cost of his own life. He's won the battle against darkness. He's won the battle for you. And all you have to do is turn from the darkness and accept him as Lord and Savior and he'll bring you into the light. So what is Christmas all about? Well, first, it's about Jesus step, is bringing in the light into a dark world. And second, it is about Jesus being the greatest gift that we could ever receive in this season. So as you enjoy the, uh, the traditions and the celebrations of Christmas, and you see lights on the tree and, and lights on the houses and candles lit up that we're going to be doing in a few moments, would you remember the light of Christ who came to bring you out of the darkness? He came to bring hope and peace and joy and love. He came to ultimately bring salvation. As you open gifts this, uh, this year from the tree and from people you love, would you remember the greatest gift that you've received in Christ and that's eternal life with Jesus? If you've not received that gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ and you want to receive that, come talk to me and I would love to walk you through that. But let me pray for us and then we're going to continue to sing some more songs. I'm going to invite the, uh, the worship team to come back up. Would you pray with me? Father, what a, a great evening this has been singing songs to you. Thank you that you have given us voices to sing praises to you, Lord. As we reflect on the meaning of Christmas, would you remind us often that you are the light that has come into the darkness, that you have offered the greatest gift that we could ever receive, which is eternal life with you. Lord, if someone here has not received that gift, I pray that you would make it clear to their heart. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to receive our, our singing as praises to you. And Lord, when we light these candles, would that be a reminder of what you did coming to this world 2,000 years ago, to be the light of the world. Lord, we love you, and uh, I pray that you would continue to receive our praise now. We pray this in your name. Amen. Would you stand with us, and we're going to sing a few more songs. We're going to sing... One song, and then the last song is the one we're going to light the candles with.
All right, I'm going to ask a couple of the deacons to uh, light the candles. They're going to light them at the ends, and then you'll just kind of pass it along, and then we'll sing Silent Night together. joining us this evening. Um, if you could blow out your candles and uh, you can either place them back on your seat or there's going to be a bucket at the back as well. Uh, but on behalf of Chetwin Baptist Church and myself, um, Merry Christmas, have a happy new year and drive home safe. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>